the most basic protection device that you will find on the low voltage system are fuses. These basically consist of a single strand of wire connected to two conducting end caps. They come in all shapes and sizes and are available in a wide range of current ratings. We achieve different fuse ratings by changing the diameter of the wire inside the fuse. As the wire diameter increases, so does the fuse rating, as a larger diameter wire will melt at a higher current magnitude. Fuses are used to provide basic overload protection and will operate quickly when a fault occurs on the system. Here we have a 60 amp fuse protecting a feeder. Here we have a logarithmic graph with the operating time in seconds down the left hand side and the current in amps across the bottom. What's a logarithmic graph? Well, it's simply a graph in which each main increment is 10 times the value of the previous one. The first increment is 1, the next one is 10, 100, 1000, 10,000 and 100,000. For the sub-increments, we go up in 1s for the first section, on the next section we're in 10s, then 100s, and this carries on down the graph. Why do we use the logarithmic graph? Well, the current that we want to study has a huge range. The normal operating current for the 60 amp circuit may be 10, 20 or 30 amps. But when we get a fault, the current magnitude can increase to 10,000 amps, and we want to see this full range of current on the same graph. The only way we can do this is to use a logarithmic scale. Let's now plot the characteristic for the 60 amp fuse on the graph. As we can see, the fuse characteristic follows the general principle that we apply, but as the current increases, the operating time reduces. Let's now energise the feeder. During normal operation, the value of the current on the feeder will continuously vary as the load varies. During the normal operating range, the fuse will pass the current through it and not react. Therefore, this part of the fuse characteristic is called the no trip zone. Let's now increase the magnitude of the load and see what happens. As the load current steadily increases, we leave the no trip zone and enter the next area of the characteristic, which is the trip zone. In this zone, the fuse will react. The operating time of the fuse will depend on the level of the current. At 300 amps, the operating time is just under 4 seconds. The wire inside the fuse will now melt, disconnecting the supply to the feeder circuit. The fuse has now provided a basic overload function. Let's now replace the fuse and increase the current again. Let's now see what happens if we apply a fault to the feeder. This time, the current increases substantially. At this magnitude of current, the fuse operates virtually instantaneously. The wire inside the fuse melts, disconnecting the supply to the load. Fuses come in various current ratings, and each of these different fuse ratings has its own characteristic. As you would expect, as the current rating increases, the characteristic pushes farther down the current axis. Logarithmic graphs are a great way of showing the full range of currents that a device is likely to experience. In the old days, all of the characteristics had to be drawn on logarithmic paper, but now all protection grading is done using software, which already contains the characteristics of all the fuses and other equipment that you need to coordinate. It is therefore very easy to try all of the different characteristics and settings for the equipment before you go out and purchase it. The next type of device that we normally see is a high rupturing or HRC fuse. These are used on low voltage industrial circuits. Again, they provide a basic overload function, but with slightly different characteristics 
than the wire fuse we've seen previously. If you look inside the fuse, instead of a single wire, you will see a compound that will ignite once the current reaches a certain magnitude, hence the name high rupturing capacity.